platform desktop Wii applications. So for those who don't know, Wii is a gaming system much like uh, PlayStation or Xbox, but the distinguishing feature of a Wii was that it involved controllers that were sensitive to position and movement. That meant you got to have games that involve a lot of rapid and physical motion, which is always a recipe for fun. And it turns out that what's, what lets the Wii games do that, we can employ in actual desktop applications. Now with the Wii system, there are uh, three main parts. There's the Wii console, it's the thing that takes the DVD and hooks up to your TV, and the remote, that's the thing you rapidly click. And there are some other controllers like the uh, balance board and rock band guitar, but they act very much like the remote. And there's a thing called the sensor bar, it's a gray bar, it typically sits on top of your television, and it's got a bunch of lights on the end. We're mainly concerned with those last two, with the remote and with the sensor bar, and in particular we're concerned with the Wii uh, remote. Remote inside of it has an accelerometer which makes it sensitive to motion along various twists and turns and tilts and so on like that. And so there are six degrees of, of interaction there that it responds to. At the front of the remote is an infrared camera that's sensitive to IR light. And the IR light comes from that sensor bar, sits on top of the TV. Now at either end of that bar are two sets of lights. And in some of those lights, some of the lights are angles. So what happens is when you've got your controller there and you're playing your game, the light that comes down is actually a cluster of lights. It's not just a single point. There may be two, four lights of, of various intensity. Now, the way this all works out is you've got the remote which gets IR information from the sensor bar and it beams this back to magical radiation to the Wii. Now luckily this magical radiation is called Bluetooth and it's pretty well understood. What that means is that this, what's in that Wii controller can be, uh, the, the console can be swapped out for some other device that understands Bluetooth, such as a laptop or a Mac or some other thing. This is an epic win. In order to do this, though, you're going to need some software, some libraries, unless you want to hack Bluetooth yourself. I decided to go with Java. This is not because I'm a fan of the Java language. I'm actually a fan of the Ruby language. But I can use JRuby, which is Ruby implemented in Java, write my code in Ruby, but still use all the Java libraries. The other big win if you're going with Java is, in the ideal world, is you get cross-platform. So you can build one application which mostly will work on Linux, on a Mac, on, on Vista, and so on like that. So how do we do this? If you're building a, uh, a Java desktop album, there's a good chance you're going to be using Swing. You're going to have your really outstanding, sophisticated application here. It'll have text fields and buttons and so on. What happens is, in the standard uh, application, if you type something or click a button, it's going to send events into your code. Now, luckily for JRuby, there's a nice library called Monkey Bar, which makes building desktop applications to swing really a breeze. And the event model simply says, hey, I got an OK button click event, so I'm going to hook some code to that, and something terrific is going to happen as a result of that. Now, with the Wii library, and the one I'm using is called Wii Remote J, very much the same thing. You get various kinds of events coming along, and you simply have to hook up code that says, hey, some Wii event thing happened, what do I want to do with it? So one nice win is that is a similar development model. The downside is the data you get from the Wii mode is very raw. You don't get a nice A button. You don't get a nice A button push. You get some button was pushed, and you've got to figure out which it is. You don't get a nice I gradually shifted to the left. You get, you know, Rats. There's math involved. I've been writing code to wrap this up to make it nice, so it's much easier to write these applications, go to the URL, open source, grab it, hack, so that in the end, what I really want is focus on building interesting things, not calculating rads. Other down point is there's some issues with latency. Like, you have noticed I'm not always in sync with the slides. That's on purpose. That's a rhetorical technique to show you that sometimes as you're trying to calculate certain things, you fall out of step with what's going on. You need to be careful in your code. Right side, though, is yes, indeed, I have written apps that do, in fact, run on multiple systems. Not doing little things but getting a Bluetooth stack correct or doing certain MIDI finessing. Overall, though, it's a big win. Icing on the cake. You can do this at home without actually buying a Wii system, though an excuse to buy a Wii is probably a good thing. You can buy a Wii mode on its own, for 40 bucks, you can buy a sensor bar on its own for about 20 bucks, or build your own and hack it. So, have fun, we have fun. <laughs>